Welcome back, everyone. There's more news on the tragic death of Dante Wright, who was shot and killed on Sunday in Minneapolis during a traffic stop. Veteran officer Kim Potter told investigators that she reached for her taser, but mistakenly grabbed her firearm instead. Potter, who has since resigned in the wake of the shooting, was arrested on a second-degree manslaughter charge yesterday. She bonded out of jail last night, and if found guilty, she faces up to 10 years in prison. So with that, you've probably seen it, but we'll show it to you again. On the front page of today's LA Times, look here. People in the community are saying not enough, that this was a deliberate and unlawful use of force, while others say this was just an accident on behalf of Potter. So with this, we brought in retired LAPD Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey uh, to give us her take on things. Uh, Sergeant, uh, thank you for being with us. We appreciate your time. Thank you. So you've seen the video. You've likely seen the cover of LA Times. If not, you just saw it right now. What do you make of everything so far? Well, you know, what I'll say is this, based on my 20 years wearing a police uniform on the Los Angeles Police Department, I would argue that it's virtually impossible for a tenured veteran officer as Kim Potter to make that kind of mistake. Mm -hmm. It's imperative and we're required to be intimately familiar with our guns. We handle them on a daily basis, as I'm sure Officer Potter did during her 26 years. Every day mm -hmm. she touched that weapon. And so for her to assert that somehow this was a mistake and she didn't realize that she held that gun in her hand and looked down the sights of her barrel, she mistook it for a taser, I find it offensive. Here's the other thing is, is uh, enlighten our viewers, will you, about the difference between the taser and the gun? Because some may look at it and say, well, they look similar, but they actually don't. And, and from what I'm learning is the feel is different as well. In addition to the feel being different, I mean, the weight is different. The amount of pressure that's required to make a conscious effort to insert your finger into the trigger guard and pull it is very different from what you would do to discharge a taser. And so all of it, all of it, is problematic and I don't believe for one minute that it was a mistake it was murder in the case of Dante Wright what do you want to see happen in the case as a result of this I feel like we've talked about these cases time and time and again well what I'd like to see is accountability and so you know a lot of people are asking for it and I think accountability means different things for different people you know, there's a call for more training, and I don't think that training is necessarily the issue, but let's just put these two together. Accountability and training, if that's what you want to say is needed, looks like a conviction. When you start convicting police officers who act uh, in a way that's contrary to their training, uh, a violation of law in some cases, and others find out that I've got a partner over here who's serving time, maybe it will give the next officer pause when they go to pull a trigger on someone who's running away on a proposed misdemeanor warrant. Right, you know, Sergeant Dorsey, can you can you talk to what you mentioned training, so I wanna ask you a little bit more about that. I was reading that this officer, Kim Potter, she was out in the field, she was actually training another officer when all of this transpired. At what point should she have pulled back and said, I have a trainee with me, maybe I shouldn't be involved, or should she have even been involved in this type of call? Well, she has a trainee. That means that she just had a probationary officer. And so, you know, a probationary officer is a full-fledged officer. They're just learning on the job. But this was uh, not her initial stop. She was looked like backup to me. She inserted mm -hmm. herself into the situation. And being a tenured veteran officer, she certainly knew that pulling a taser even on a suspect who's about to flee officers mm -hmm. because he has a warrant in the system is not appropriate. And so when someone runs, whether it's on foot or in a vehicle, you have two choices. Get ready to get some exercise on foot or you get in your car and pursue them. But in this case, they knew who Dante Wright was. They had already run him. They knew where he lived. There was no exigent circumstance to stop him in that moment. Conduct a follow-up at his home later if you really want to get him on this arrest warrant. What is your message to young adults, young teenagers who may be watching this? You know, they see, they probably uh, see Dante. They know he called his mom. He was very scared, according to the passenger that was with him. What do you tell them when they see stuff like this? And maybe their first instinct is not to cooperate. It is to flee and run from the police. What I say to everyone is the same thing that I say to my four sons as a mother. Comply with any directive an officer gives you. And if you find that you are offended by the service that you just received, there's a procedure in place. The goal is to survive the police encounter and go home. And that's on both sides of the equation. Mm -hmm. Given your experience, Sergeant Dorsey, do you think that 
maybe there's more pressure on female officers to take charge in a situation uh, like this or, or a situation for any matter when they take the call? I can't speak to any particular officer's intent or mindset, but what I can tell you as a female officer myself, having been in patrol for 20 years, I never felt any pressure to try to prove myself. Uh, I did what I was uh, trained to do. I mm -hmm. treated people the way I would want you to treat my family should you stop them. And so as long as you uh, do that and if you uh, have the right intent, you treat people the way you want them to treat your family, you take bad guys to jail and you take them with their dignity. And we'll leave it just just right there. Uh, Sergeant Dorsey, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for, uh, for, for your uh, comments on this. And of course, there's going to be more to come. So uh, please stay by the cell phone when we call you back, right? Because uh, we know that this officer involved is going to be back in court. Uh, she's already been charged, but she's going to make her first court appearance today at 1130. So we'll see what comes of that. Until then, I want to mention also, uh, in between doing this and, and your personal life, retired Sergeant Dorsey's latest book, she's got that. It's called Black and Blue, The Creation of a Social Advocate. Again, there it is, and you can pick up your copy as well. Be sure to uh, download that on your phone. Thank you, Sergeant Dorsey.